Hello, hello. Good morning. How's it going? Um, good. I'm a little sweaty. I just came back from getting my bike fixed in Kreuzberg. Well, a little, little warm there in Berlin. A little warm, but I got some awesome cookies. Um, they're marzipan, all of them. Yummy. Fun, fancy. Very European. Can't get that in LA, can you? Can't walk into a bakery, huh? No. <laughs> Can't go anywhere. Sucks. Well, that'll be me in a week. Um, okay, so... Uh, I guess um, I'll share the screen and we'll figure out what we're going to work on. Okay, sounds good. Let's see. Okay, we're looking at the big one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, try to remember how to do everything. <laughs> Not that. Where's my web browser? It's disappeared. Nope, let me try it again. Aha, okay. Um, so I sent chapter nine, the case study here of the landing page campaign to Sebastian at Volkswagen mm -hmm. and they're going to um well I forwarded you the email they're they're going to review it and I told them kind of what was um horrible you know bad like major changes that would affect yeah I saw that and um he seemed uh excited and he seemed uh that uh He's going to move now toward getting uh, some meetings to talk to people there about their digital transformation stuff. That's exciting stuff for chapter 10. Yeah. And um, obviously those meetings will take place when I'm in LA. So uh, we'll be able to do them together. Exciting. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we're so close to um, done uh with the first draft of the manuscript um okay so here's where we are uh i cleaned up the outline a little bit um okay and i uh we were waiting on the personal anecdote because i don't want to write that until i've actually turned in the manuscript to sarah to do an edit Okay. Um, just because I know that I need to do this alone and I'm still worried. I want to use stuff. I want to I want to maximize you in, in case someone hires you away and the personal anecdote I should be would be the thing I would write alone. Right. Unless you're still working with me. Um, which would be funny and fun. Okay. <laughs> um, I did think of an idea for it like that it starts with the picture of me with a Carmen Ghia and ends with me with my new leased car in LA, which will probably be a Volkswagen uh, nice. Golf. Uh, that's what Uli thinks I should get, like, um, because it's like not a poser car, like a BMW or Mercedes or a, um, an Audi, like I want to get. And since I don't mm -hmm. drive, um, so we'll see, um, but that also happens to be like a top selling car and part of the story. So we'll see um, if by the time I write this, I have uh, a picture that ends with me with another VW. Um, so we have this done uh, or in for feedback. Yeah. And I don't know when we're gonna hear from them. Like it could be a week or two weeks or something, but I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we are going to write either the mobility section or the growth hacking, growth design section. 
Yes. I'm down for either. What do you can take equal amounts of, of Googled researching and writing, so um I mean the denial or the lazy part of me wants to write the mobility section because it's a break from writing about conversion. The practical or pragmatic side of me thinks we should write this while the case study is fresh in our head because they need to connect together. I agree. I guess we should go with the practical side <laughs> and maybe write that growth hacking stuff. Plus, we'll feel better once it's done. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Plus, it's our common theme to just keep pushing the mobility section off forever and ever and ever from one chapter to the next. That's true. That's true. Um, Why mess with a good thing? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm even thinking of doing of renting one of these Miles little cars out there to test out the Volkswagen car with their this mobility app and see how. Um, great or horrible the experiences. So there's another excuse to put it off till uh, for two days. Um, all right, so we have all this uh, crap. Uh, actually, <laughs> we have to, we have all this crap. We already kind of cleaned out chapters. We know like the totally irrelevant things. You think we should go through and weed out the totally relevant things or talk or start with an outline? No, no. I think we should start with an outline. I think we already weeded out like the, the completely irrelevant things. Some things we may end up still cutting, but these were all things we wanted to at least discuss, including. Okay. So, so. okay. So let's start with the list of, um, all right, let's start with the list of the crap that we want to cover. Um, and then go from there. Let me copy this um, other section outline so we have it up here. Ugh. Oh my God. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, I guess the first part is to just talk about what the current title is. Designing what what is conversion? Designing, yeah. For conversion or growth. One of those. Yeah, since we don't even know. It's really great. Um well we know we need to talk about all right, how about I say what is maybe we do what is growth? Okay, how about something like this? What is conversion as so far as UX product strategy? And then, um, yeah, because you have to know what conversion is if you want to talk about growth hacking as it relates to this kind of work. And then what, it, yeah, what is, uh, I think we talk about growth hacking first because it came first. Mm -hmm. What is growth design? Um, and and mobility, we're not even going to think about right now because it's just yeah. okay. Um, oh, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in here, for sure, we're going to talk about a funnel. This funnel concept. Right. Um, any, throw out any ideas, you know, that we're going to talk about, or you go through the, yeah, maybe we should go through the text that we have in here. See if there's any like major topics we want to make sure to still include. Do you think I need to say why I'm throwing out the funnel matrix or just throw it out, not explain why? I would just throw it out and not explain why. Like we're still going to talk about like the stages of the funnel but yeah i think it'll it'll for people that have the first version of the book they can look at the first version of the book for people that have never seen it they don't know it ever existed so no need to confuse them right and then that way it doesn't need to be in the 20 
21 toolkit. Yeah. Or I, and I don't need to apologize for, or explain why I threw out something that was such a, uh, you know, like if it was, I threw it out because it was shitty or I threw it out because a page count. How about that? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, first we have, what is growth design? When it's really, what is, this is like, what is a funnel? Mm -hmm. Or how about, why do we care about funnels? Okay. Um, okay. And then, then, oh, I see. Then we have, these are stages of uh, customer acquisition. Yeah. Which I think is all we're going to include, right? Okay. So stages of customer acquisition go in the setup. Okay, so that's the highest level. Where, wait, where does that new thing that, I, oh, here it is. Um, I think these are part of the same thing. Stages of, or, okay. And yeah, I think that's the clearest way to understand the funnel. Right. And then I think we dwell the most on the suspect phase. Yeah. Okay, and then um, so what else do we have? So these are all stages. These are all uh, this piece on Doug Rushkoff is about This is kind of re relevant to um, that sentence that you had about um, supporting hypotheses. Yeah, well, it was like, um, what am I thinking of? It was like, uh, yeah, it was in that part about, oh yeah, it was like this line like about how uh that you can't just you need to you can't just look at the the metrics from the ad you need to look at the metrics uh, uh -huh. of the landing page. when we're talking about the are you talking about when we were Carol reviewing Shea. the conversions and i said something about how even though they have similar conversion rates like that doesn't actually mean anything you have to look at the number right. of conversions that also happen yeah exactly so now, when he talks about it in his book, Program to Be Program, he's, his point here is that you shouldn't look at data points um, at, uh, in individual context. You need to look at them in context. And, and he's mm -hmm. talking at a much uh, higher philosophical level. Um, but the question remains, um, is, it, is it twisting? trying to just like jam them into something that doesn't belong or is it relevant and we could put it. I think we might be able to include it down here when we're talking about the, it's in the part where we're talking about the landing page conversions or the problem and solution ads. All right. Um, so then I'm going to throw it in the Volkswagen section for now. Yeah. Well, we'll look at this sentence here. Landing page is like, Landing page, what is like landing a science page is like a science experiment. What? That's because it is. You're conducting a methodical procedure with the goal of uh, your your products. Do you perceive you are using metrics to give insight into whether the cause? Uh, this is trash now. Uh, Ill generative will generate a positive user effect. 
Oh my God, this is so screwed up. Um, I like that outcomes are basically your validated learnings. Is that correct? Basically. Oh, basically. <laughs> right, because I'm hedging. Okay. Um, all right, so I guess we need to figure out if, uh, so that's just moving it down, sorry. It was just, I had lost my, here we go, okay. Okay, I don't know why it's acting weird. Let me, okay, let me copy this out because it doesn't belong here. Oh my God. And then take it down to. I think just under the picture of the landing page conversions from Unbounds. Um. Keep going. Should be on page like 20. Oh my God. Okay. All right. So it's somewhere around here where you, it was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, right there. Now we have a clearer picture. Yeah, right under that image. Okay. Um, so should I just plop it in here for now? Not under this image, under the next image, the unbounce one. Yeah. Because that's where we're talking about how the conversion rates are close. Okay. Let me just put it here. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Let, uh, let's just tweak this. Lenny, uh, I feel like it was probably trying to say. If it feels like a science experiment, that's because it is. I feel like we like already like put the nail in the coffin hit or hit or beating a dead horse. That's the right expression. Like we're talking about like, it's almost like science, maybe possibly because it is. I know. Well, if we had this thing, we, we rewrote it and now my things messed up. I don't know why. Okay. So, can we just put the, that whole area is going to have to be smoothed out. I noticed that yeah. we talked about uh, when I reread it at first and to Sebastian that we talked about like experiment design in two different sections. And I, and I found a few things that we want to revisit and I think we should get their feedback and come back to it after this. Yeah. Cause we're going to need to go over it all anyways. And I thought of another thing, if they don't give us, the demo the demographic targeting information for their ad campaign where we talk about your problem and solution ad where is mm -hmm. it like where we first talk about problem and solution ad yeah is it it's in analyze the results on page starts on page 18. Okay. Okay. There it is. So here's what I'm thinking. If, if they don't give us, if we keep, if we're keeping your problem solution ad in here, because we don't have the ability to use grabs of their campaign. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and Sarah right. doesn't deem it as totally confusing that we're jumping between two different ad campaigns, even though I like the juxtaposition because we show a $5 campaign. Mm -hmm. I think we need a uh, problem and solution ads to show. Okay. Yeah. So people can see what the difference is between them. Yeah. Cause I'm imagining that like future students in the class will be like, they'll just read a sentence, but they won't get it. But if, and I don't know, I know it would be lying, but <laughs> trying to ma mash up. I, I think we could make really good examples or you can make first drafts and then I can art direct them uh, of problem and solution ads to show people the difference. And um, it would be more helpful than just saying that the ads about the problem, the ads about the solution and not actually showing the ads. 
Okay, but do you want to wait until we get feedback on whether, like, this section is confusing, or do you want to just, like, go ahead and make those? Uh, definitely wait to see first what Volkswagen gives us. I doubt yeah. they'll give us enough information to, to replace this. To totally replace this, um, because it would require. They might. Who knows? Let's see what they have, um, and uh, and then also get Sarah's support. But and then move into creating the art to give people a really good reference for a problem ad and a solution ad, and also give context for them. But your pro but your problem ad is going to have to be really good. No pressure. <laughs> Although the solution ad, it, no, you keep it honest. It, it, it should be pretty good um, since it's got four times as many clicks. Yeah. All right. So everyone who's watching this knows that the whole book's fake. All right. All right. So that's great. We, we cleaned out two paragraphs. Um, what is this other crap? Reference user. So these are the stages. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I think I could get rid of this. I guess we'll see when we get to the funnel and we'll just chuck all that crap out. Um, yeah. And then this is all leftover landing page stuff up here. Mm hmm. It's, can we just throw this out? Yes. It's redundant. Like we did a better job. Okay. I think we just weren't ready to let it go yesterday. Okay. A positive response, which is click contract specific act with bite sized measurements called metrics. Does our metrics used anywhere in the, uh, Facebook or unbounce or Google ad management section where they're like talking about? Um, I don't think so. I think they just say like see results and see like graphs and charts. Okay. So then we might not even like, I know metrics was like a huge tr term that we always used. Uh, when I wrote the first edition, but I don't know if it needs to be so defined. I'll comment. Yeah, we only use it one time when we're explaining how landing page experiments work. And we're talking about conversion metrics. Okay, all right. So let me just comment this. Uh, comment and say uh, TBD. Um, when we talk about metrics. Okay, and then um, somewhere, so lead generation um, is another thing to lose, to use for landing pages. I and guess so. Yeah, like um, all the leads that those guys captured in the Volkswagen campaign. Yeah, when you ask for people's email and stuff. So I'm a little bummed that we didn't put it in there. Uh, maybe it went. I remember it's it's in the analysis thing. It's here. Okay, here's the thing. We didn't. It's, it's my fault. We didn't explain that the landing page included a form, and that the form was um, generation. So would that go down here in the results, or would that go? I feel like it'd make more sense to put it up in the landing page section where we're describing how to make the landing page and showing Volkswagen's landing page. Yeah, totally. All right, so 
Is that up here then? Okay. So that's right. We didn't show, because we just showed the top of it. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I'm going to say, um, right. Now there's like content that we would have maybe not needed from them. Well, did you send them a Google Doc link? Yeah. Theoretically, we could update it. Yeah. I mean, unless he downloads it. I, I think we could sneak it in there today. Yeah. Okay. So, crap. Um, should we write? Are we going to remember what we're adding new into ours, or should we be writing into theirs? I mean, I think if we're just going to add, like, a paragraph and possibly an image, then we should be able to keep track of it, and I can insert it into the Volkswagen one. If we're going to, like, go around and make small edits everywhere, then we should probably track our changes okay. somehow. Okay. Um, I got to stop eating these cookies because I'm going to gain back my COVID um, 19 or whatever those pounds that I lost. Yeah. See, most people, they gain 19 pounds during COVID, so. I, I did gain those, but um, then I lost them when I got to Berlin. Uh, and then, then you'll find them again if you keep eating the cookies. That tracks. I don't know, but they're like, they're marzipan cookies, you know? Too dangerous. Mmm, um, yummy. Okay, so, uh, okay, how about um, we deal with this paragraph? I know we were supposed to be somewhere else, but. Um, You're not showing your screen, so I can't see what which paragraph you're talking about. Gosh. <sighs> okay. Ah. Okay. If this is going to go somewhere, for, forget about the science experiment stuff. Right. Uh, the point of this paragraph is... It relates to the prior paragraph where we're discussing the importance of viewing your data points in context. Okay, so does it go before this paragraph or after? Hmm. That's what I'm less sure about. So, because we show, so prior to the image, we're defining like, here's what visitors are, conversions, conversion rate. And then after the image, we say, now we have a clearer picture about how well the ad actually performed. And we discuss the conversion rates. Okay, but look, so how about this? It might go in the middle somewhere. Yeah, I was thinking like, okay, this tells her huh, that the problem ad performed, but she still can't say it's the better ad until she looks at the conversion. It's almost, if we were going to insert it, it would be like between these two points. Or yeah, that could be, yeah. I'm worried about disconnecting those sentences, but I do think that somewhere in here could be good. Okay, so then it seems like it goes. What if we put it here and just let Sarah throw it out if she hates it? I was going to say, what if we put it after the image, like closer to where it is right now? But if we just say, because um, right now we're talking about, like, now we have a clear picture. Here's what the conversion rates are. But we also need to consider her sample size. What if instead of saying, but we also need to consider her sample size, we, we say something about, like, uh, something closer to, like, but we need to look at this data in context and then we provide the paragraph about uh, the program or be programmed and then we take this because only 11 people clicked and one person uh, converted that led to a high conversion rate if we compare the number of conversions like if we give that as like more explanation of the importance of looking at your data in context does that make sense like yeah I'm basically saying we should put it like there okay let's see how it looks there um, 
oh god and then it's got this other part should i just take this other bit with it or we might delete all this other part you're conducting a methodical procedure with the goal of I guess I'm going to take it out. Let's do, I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to comment that this is maybe garbage. Yeah. Uh, well, redundant or something. Sure, spell it right. Um, and then um, now we have a clear picture of how well the problem ad actually performed. We can see that the con conversion rate was slightly higher for the problem ad compared to the solution ad, but we need to consider the conversion rate rates in context. In his book, Programmed or Be Programmed, blah, blah, writes, everything is a data point. Yes, thanks that we can retrieve any piece of data in, on our terms, but we do at the risk of losing its context. When it's a valid to look at or find a way to cross-reference to validate it. I think it should be and. But here we're not showing, here we're not showing crop referencing data. And then let's look at this last one. So show another team member your logic for tracking metrics that validate or disprove any meaningful customer. Make sure you all agree your learnings are correct. I think this sentence is deleted. Yeah. And I'm worried that this is his point. Or the way we're using it is to say, don't just like look at the first piece of data and say it's enough. Mm -hmm. um, and he's talking about something more uh, theoretical. So the choice is to completely lose his quote or uh, help Jessica. I'm we thinking can't. so. I'm deleting this because we're not talking about cross-referencing. Do you agree with that? Well, I guess the, the thing that I'm confused about, so we're talking about, I guess I don't know, <laughs> I don't know the context of this quote. So I'm looking at it as like, you can retrieve information, but you do so at the risk of losing context. So we need to make sure to reincorporate that context if possible. That's how I was reading it, but you know where it actually came from, so. I believe that his book is something about, um, he was trying to advocate that people learn how to program um, rather than be programmed and understand data. Um, but I think, in, I think now it's a stretch. Okay. All we're trying to say is don't just like, like looking at the clicks on the ad is actually more of a vanity metric issue. You can still say, oh, wow, this got more clicks. That's great. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I'm feeling that we should pull it out. Okay. I mean, if it doesn't feel right there, much easier to just remove it and put it back to the way it was. Um, should I make a V2 so we have it somewhere and just move on with this? I think we can just delete it because we have it, it's in like, it's in the first book. Like this whole paragraph came directly from the first book. I know, but. Or we can add it as a comment. We can also make a V2, but we might want to take back out the lead generation sentence that we added in and just make V2 kind of what we sent to VW. Oh, I think it's okay. Um, 
why don't we make this V2 because then we know that they have the V1 version of it. Is that all right? Yeah, we'll except for that one weird sentence in the middle, but yeah. Okay. Oh, no. okay, fine. I'll do what you said. I'll just make it a, a, a comment for us to decide. Um, I'm, so I'm putting this back. And I'm putting uh, here. This is what this originally said. I know, attaching the comment to here. All right. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab this citation and add it as a comment to your comment. <laughs> okay, and then if this sounds like a science, that's because it is you're conducting a methodical procedure with the goal. Of it whether it will generate a positive effect. I have a feeling this is garbage too. Yeah, I think it doesn't really fit here. We already say something pretty similar to that when we're talking about defining the experiment. All right, so then I'm, I'm gonna put it up with that and then we can decide if we want any of that content, if, it, if the sentences are better. Okay. Um, is that here? It's underneath that. It's like the first step of our flow. Oh yeah, that's right. And then that was repetitive. Okay. Um, and then, uh, above that, this it's here, right? No, above that. This is where we're creating a landing page, defining the experiment right above that table. Here. Yeah. Somewhere in there. So it could go in here. Yeah, we could just insert it in there. Oh, brother. Um, is it okay like this for now? It's got a con, it's, it's somewhere relevant, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's great. Uh, and then I wanted to, uh, we, we're gonna remember to do the, okay. then. Let's get the landing page. Yeah, so that we can the update VW's version. All right, so. Uh, oh boy. I'm surprised that I forgot to talk about this other stuff. There's just too many pieces to talk about. It just kind of got lost. Um, yeah, so the things we need to mention, I'll chop it in there is uh, that the Emails can be uh, seen that it's hard to get. Didn't we say somewhere that it's hard to get people's emails? Yes. Let me try to find that. Yeah, your landing page must have, and then one of the things is a call to action. This is the most important element on the page and is usually a button or a form with the button. Forms are typically used to capture email addresses for lead generation. These days, you need a compelling reason for someone to part with their real email address because of concerns of getting spammed. So for testing business ideas, it is more effective to use a button to gauge interest. And then we talk about what the button should look like. So I guess we did already mention using email addresses for lead generation on landing pages. So maybe we just need to include the image and say, here's a, a email form used for lead generation. All right, let me put it in there. And I'm worried that I didn't show the whole thing when they gave it to us. Like, what, are, are we not really including 
all this other stuff. Yeah, we might want, because before we just put in the image and we said, Volkswagen's Einfach Auto Wash and landing page top. So clearly we intended to put in middle and bottom in some way. Okay, so. Uh, crap. Yeah. What the hell is all that sound? Okay. Um. So this is middle. Oh my God. Well, if you think that we, can I lose this now that we talked about it? Yeah, I think so. And then should I just go, what the hell is that? Can you make that period go like this? Like, um, and then should I go ahead and put the bottom? Yeah, what do we want to include as the bottom? Is the bottom going to actually be the footer? Are we going to have two pages from the middle? Well, wait, uh, yeah, or worse than that, are we not showing uh, the feature part? Or yeah, the we definitely part? need, we need a feature part. You know, like, why am I not using this? I worked so hard to get it. I think we could show either like the image that just has the one screen with these icons next to it, or we can show the one with the staggered screens back and forth, like a section of that. Okay, here, let's look at the English version, decide what's more, more interesting uh, in case we uh, break it down. I can't believe, yeah, I can't believe we, made, we didn't do it. Uh, um, so here it says, uh, comfortable, book your watching, fast, optional rate, without that. The most comfortable car wash experience, now close to you. Okay, here's what this stuff says. Oh, it's like steps on how to use it. I feel like this is more compelling. The steps on how to use it? I feel like the other stuff was more compelling where it's giving you, here's the advantages. Cause we told people that what you have to have on your landing page, uh, you need your logo and name of product, value prop and tagline, background images and or photos slash graphics slash videos that show what the solution delivers. It could be interfaces depicting your key experiences. Oh, and we forgot about talking about taking the, the anchor the headers out. We have it as a, that note in red. Okay. Um, all right. So I don't think we need to get too hung up on this, um, but we need to definitely decide. Okay. So you think, uh, this is better. I think that's like it, a very succinct way to show like here are okay. the experiences and or advantages. Okay, so we're gonna go with the German version of it. Yeah, because otherwise everyone's just gonna go, oh, my landing page needs to have the steps of how to use my app. That's true. Step one, make an account, you know. <laughs> that's, that's very, very bad, very, very bad. Okay, so uh, let me take this out. So we're gonna call this middle. We could, the form, I feel like there's a piece of, of something missing here. Why is there white there? Okay. Um, okay, so. Uh, focus, copy. I'm going to say this is the bottom because I think 
there, it's at the bottom as well. Let me just double check. Okay. Uh, where's the whole shebang? Okay. Do you see something down there? There's, let me see if they're identical. There is register Dick Jets. Register Dick per email and um Oh and they'll send you a download link. So what's the difference between these two? Oh my god. Oh wait, do I have the English version of it? Let me just don't tell people that. I think you have the bottom of the page as an image, that sure. last screenshot to the right. Okay. Join now, register now. Yes, I agree. Okay, so what does that say in English compared to what the top part says in English? I think it's your first screenshot. Receive, register by email to receive the download link. I think they're basically the same thing. Yeah, they just have different, slightly different headers on them. Okay, so what if we, I would prefer that the middle be the, the, the features and the bottom be the form. Right, I agree. Okay, so let's make, let's do that. Um, so, okay, let me get, okay, so this is, did, we, did I put this in yet? Uh, yes. Okay, so we're call. okay, we're going to go with this and call this, the, the, I'll leave this here, hold on, I'll call this the bottom, and I have to put in the real bottom now. Mm-hmm. And then we'll call that one the middle. So this is good. And do we want to add call outs to all of these two, or do we want to just add to the caption to say what's being depicted here? Like saying like this is a feature list or a list of uh, key experiences or whatever we want to call it. This is a form for collecting emails for as part of lead generation. Um. Let me get the, yeah. I was gonna say for the first one, obviously we're doing call outs to say like, here's the tagline, here's the download buttons. Here's where the logo would go. I think, uh, our, wait, have, I think we decided that we weren't gonna put the call outs in the landing page because it was gonna, mess up the artwork. We left the note about putting call outs in. Maybe in my head I decided that. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so I'm gonna take this. I, I think it's a bad idea because it'll, it won't allow them to see the whole landing page if there's numbers on it, you know? Yeah. We might want to just add to the captions then to just describe briefly what's in the images so people know what to look for, especially since it's in German. I know. I don't think we have to translate everything, but. Okay, so then um, middle page. We either have call outs or we add a paragraph of text that describes what's going on. Yeah, and I think we, we just... should add text. This is the thing. I think in writing in the captions, you're not supposed to put, they're, they're like supposed to be disposable or whatever. People don't have to read Yeah, them. not like essential information. That's it. Yeah. So. Well, it depends how much you want to write. If you're just going to write, this is a product features section. This is an email address form for lead generation. 
then I think you can put it in the comments. If you want to write more than that, then we probably need to stick some paragraphs in between. Um, here, it looks like... Because we're already explaining everything they do need. We just need to point out those things in the to let people know which images to look for those things in. Okay, I got it. Yeah, 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 totally, I'm catching up. All right, in here, where do we talk about the... Here is where we could say, uh, she, uh, the, she, figure, whatever. Yeah, when we say, talk about lead generation. Um, and then the middle thing, where do we have, oh, this is it. And th so this would be C figure nine, five. For the background images, photos that show what the solution is. Yeah. Screenshot of your interface is depicting, you can all, okay. Uh, wait, show your, okay, wait, what is being shown here? It's a. Uh, screenshot with the benefits yeah so maybe we can say this could be screenshots of interfaces depicting your key experiences or here let's uh, see what they call them. okay here's what they call, they call um, the advantages i think no yes your advantages um which i think is just a weird german translation for benefits yeah. Yeah. So maybe we just also tell people like, you don't have to just show interfaces depicting your key experiences. You can also provide a yeah. short summary of benefits or something like that. Perfect. Okay, so we, that, that's like where all the heavy lifting is in this bulleted thing, which makes me think it should not be a bulleted thing at some point. I have no idea. Well, they'll, they'll tell us that. Yeah. So I think we're good now. See figure nine, seven. Do we need a, um, what about the first image where we have like the logo and the tagline and the download buttons and all that stuff? Uh, wait, this one here, here's see figure nine, four. Yeah. Uh, you can Our look at nine, four through six. Exactly. Okay. Nine, four. I don't know how to do that, but nine, four, three, nine, six. Okay. Okay, so I should remove this note about adding the call outs. Yeah. Do we still want to remove the anchor links or no? I we might want, want to, to just remove them and throw that in the Volkswagen copy. Okay, I'm going to remove them and put them in and I think you should start moving this over to Volkswagen. Yeah, I will. And hope that they uh, don't notice it. Or hope they don't care. And yeah. if they do care, just explain that the reason why. Um, wait, should we, before you move it over, say what's the top of the page or is it just repetitive? Like say what is in this image or say what the top of the page is say like basically yeah read um no top, page top notice the download links notice the this like we're not doing that right we didn't do it for any of the other ones so okay so i think it's nice uh it keeps it simple we don't have to say show everything yeah. All right, so uh, 
Why is this? I'm going to go get us. I'm going to bring this back in and you can start moving it over to Volkswagen. Okay. Um, okay. So let me go find it. It's also nice that it has the um, the URL without it being, I mean, it's even a secure URL. Goodbye, hello. Okay, so are these all the same now? Yay, they are. All right, so you're moving over the images, but you're not moving over this stupid comment, right? Uh, this, I this. will double check that I did not move over the comment. I don't think you did. I think you're just grabbing the... Yeah. This and then the bullets. Yep. I just need to put in the new image you just made. Done, updated. Oh, wait, look how shitty that I lost like a, did I lose a part of the, let me zoom in. You see how, is, do you see a line missing on yeah. yours? Okay. Um, oh, that's why. It's the tab. Yeah. And we don't want that tab. That's just gonna, we don't need that, right? No not adding any value. So let me, if I could, um, I love Photoshop. It's so fun. I'm a Photoshop monkey. Okay. Uh, we going beach. Okay, flatten. Okay. Oh my God. That's that. Looks great. Hi, boyfriend. Hi. How's it going? Every day the same. <laughs> Every day we're we're on chapter nine and a half now. <laughs> okay. There yeah, is that beautiful? I don't know. Yep. Amazing. All right. Incredible. I'd want my landing page to look just like that. Yeah, now it shows the top of the page, and it doesn't need to have the whole page. I mean, there, there could be more middle. Okay, I'm going to make this 9-6. Oh, God, I'm so sick of this thing. All right. Um, we're not sick of their landing page. I'm just sick of the book. Just kidding. All right, so uh, are we good now? You put the bullets yep. in the new word. Yep. Okay, so... All updated. Okay, great. So now I'm going to delete this sentence. As great as that sentence is, I think that's okay. Let's begin with a few basics. Oh, God. All right. Okay. I think we are now what we are supposed to be doing. 
uh, do we, and do we need a note to con or we'll, we'll just remember the part about the problem solution ads? I think we'll just remember that. Okay. I can make I, a comment if you want. Yeah, I think, I think we, I think we're going to remember because I think when we get back their stuff, it, it might just disappear on its own. You know? Yeah. I'll throw a comment in here and we can just delete it. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so what is conversion? So do I talk about conversion anywhere in here? Now here we have the funnel. Okay, here, here, until, and I hate this quote. They'll always be closing. Yeah, I think I, this is gonna get replaced. Um, because I feel like it doesn't make sense anymore without the funnel matrix. So, um, I know, uh, I'm going to just add a note here after I do my story and then replace, uh, quote, oh, then replace, uh, opening, I don't know what those are called, quote, probably. Okay, um, all right, so uh, you want to talk about conversion? Here it is. If you want to be a closer, you must constantly create to increase successful outcomes for user engagement and customer acquisition. You need to design efficient funnels that do everything from engage person to eventually convert them. Customers include anybody and everybody that you need to engage in business model. And yes, users who don't pay for your service are customers too. As people begin entering the top of the funnel, you must immediately track and measure all crucial data points along the way. Uh, I honestly think that I can't write about conversion until I know what we're going to say about growth design. Okay. Let's write the growth design part then. We already wrote most of this chapter backwards. We might as well just write it from the bottom up. Okay. So, <coughs> um, okay, here's growth. Let's look at growth hacking, a term coined by a marketing blogger. The concept behind is for product team to come up with extremely hot to increase customer growth. Facebook are uh, a crossbreed of um, their masters of analytics tools, blah, 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 blah. On the growing the business by any means necessary. They push the limits, which is A-B tests, landing pages, email, deliverable, social media integration. How you doing? Give it a try. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Are you okay? Was your day all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was in the books. Sorry, I was in the bookstore to yeah. buy a present for my mom. Yeah birthday at uh, Saturday in Dusseldorf. He's going to his mom's in Dusseldorf. 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 So did you get, <laughs> what book did you get her? Uh, one I read before. That you liked? I liked, yeah. Uh, but you didn't want to give her your copy? No, I read it and to see it because I read it on the book at the beach or whatever and it's sent and it's used. So I have to buy a new one. Wait, you're giving her the book that you read on the beach in no, Greece? No, 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 I buy, I buy, no, 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 not that. I don't think okay. my mom could read anymore. 
You know, this is a present to, to give. Okay. If you, do you want to give her my book? Do you have strategy edition one? That's a joke. I'm just I kidding. Know. No, she wouldn't. Mm -hmm. It's not. Oh, it's, it's a fable with, with a fox. That's nice. I always, I always like fairy tales. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Funnels. Uh, so, uh, uh, let's see. I like this paragraph on growth hacking. Okay, I don't mind it either. I, and it feels still true. Yeah. Um, let's put the paragraph about the funnel above it, right? Yeah. So when we talk about the funnel, is all the customer acquisition stages are also going to come before the growth hacking stuff, right? Oh boy, because that makes sense. Because otherwise, it's unclear that you're we're talking about them tinkering with the sales funnel. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm hoping all this stuff here is going to go away. I mean, I think we can condense it down to just a few sentences. We're talking about like here's what a, a suspect or like a just a bullet point list you know okay here's our choice now we go and do look and look around uh cross-referencing product strategy and funnels or we go and dive into um lex roman's growth design stuff to see what's relevant to product strategy mm. Which one would you rather do first? I have no preference. Let me see if I have her stuff handy. No, I guess it makes more sense to do the... All right, so oh, let, me, um, let me go product strategy funnel. Let's see. How they talk about it. Look at this. We mapped out our conversion funnel. Uh, let's see. That looks horrible. It's old. Okay. Let me do this based on um, recent stuff. I'll say uh, from uh, 2017 to 2020. Mind the product. I think that is, what's his face's blog? No, it is William Smith. You find your target. Growth loops are the new funnels. Oh my. No, it's another thing. Time to go to church. Uh, I'm. I've heard of this guy. Um. Let's see what else there is. Um, oh, I see. Reforge. Yeah, that growth loops thing. That's what I'm looking at. It doesn't seem... Okay, how many hits came? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember... Growth loops are the new funnel. Okay. Um, that's nice. Oh, 
for. Okay, uh, brand awareness. Oh, here's the, hold on. Oh, look, she a she. Um, okay, let's decide if we're going to call it a marketing funnel, a sales funnel, some other kind of funnel. Yeah. Let's see what's more popular. You do that part. Um, I will. What else did you want me to look at besides sales and marketing funnel? What, what any other word? Product funnel, strategy what? funnel, customer funnel. What did I have in the book? Um, that funnel from um, that guy, the womanizer guy. Um, hmm. Funnel stage, rock in the funnel. Yeah, I just use funnel matrix. Um. So what did you find? What's the most common funnel? Sales. Between sales and marketing, sales is more than twice as popular when okay. connected with funnel. Okay, so also known as a revenue fund refers to the buying process that customers lead, companies lead customers through when purchasing a product. Yeah, maybe this is different because a lot of these funnels say awareness, interest, decision, sales. That's like the funnel when you look at the images for funnel. I guess marketing funnel is the same thing. Like here, how to build a sales funnel, analyze your behavior, capture attention, build a landing page. You know, like it's that allows you to bring a potential customer one step closer to your offer and a buying decision. Okay, so maybe the like awareness, interest, consideration, conversion, all that stuff is just like really broad, vague terms for going through this funnel. Right here it says the sales funnel is a metaphor for the process. Funnel five pages, lead prospect, qualified prospect, committed. Um, Uh, all right, so you said a sales funnel is more common than any other funnel. It's more, more common than a marketing funnel. Okay, so let me see sales funnel and growth. Use sales funnel and growth design and all these sales funnel and growth hacking. Uh, 
the growth hacking funnel. In marketing, the sales funnel is the process that guides the potential customer to purchase. The word funnel conveys, uh huh. And then they call they use it interchangeably. I only got like 9,000 hits for sales funnel and growth design. Okay, I got um, one and 161,000. Okay, can you do growth design with just funnel? Growth design in quotes and then funnel. Yeah. Hundred and seventy eight thousand hits. Okay, that's good. Um, all right, why don't we just go with sales funnel? Okay. Okay. All right. So um, a funnel, blah 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 blah. Or, okay. So now. Here, okay, good. And then so now we're gonna, here we talk about what a traditional sales funnel is. Um, let's put, um, and then, and ultimately uh, we are going to focus after we do that on the prospect or whatever the, I'm hoping the first one says prospect or suspect. I think it says, but let's see what it says. Okay, so, um, oh, I was like totally on a, a jamming and now I'm lost. Okay, so, okay, so now I'm gonna go sales funnel. Oh, okay, and go to images, and uh, O'Reilly will make a uh, any image I want from an image from the web so that it's not copyright. So let's look across these and say, what is like, there's an image that says prospects, contacts, leads, something. seems to me the most common thing is awareness is at the top and we could talk about awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this awareness discovery. It seems like there's like awareness, interest, decision, action. Okay, what if we just said, if you search the web for funnels, you will see 200 different versions of them. Yeah. But the common theme across all of them is that the top of the funnel is making your customer aware. Yeah. Can you write that in there before we forget it? And then I'll grab, please. And then yes. I'll grab, uh, when I can have my brother look at it because he knows this crap. Um, I'm going to see what's in Wikipedia. Pipe with a wide top. Funnel cake. There's a funnel. Wow, funnels have been around a long time. Look, this dude's got one on his head. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's see if there is a sales funnel in here. Oh, God. Doesn't exist. A purchase funnel. Oh, no. <laughs> Another word. Okay. Yeah, let's see how much that one's used. No, way less. Purchase funnel is just pretty much, I mean, it only has 219,000 results. Sales funnel had 3.3 million. Here, look at this. Um, the 
The purchase funnel is also often referred to as the customer funnel, the marketing funnel, the sales funnel, or the conversion funnel. Why don't we just take this line and put it in there and just say fun with funnels and <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I like it. Okay. Uh, new title, fun with funnels. Okay, so we get there in the e-commerce waste tap. Okay, so, okay, you got that. And then we have all of a sudden, um, whoopsie, did I do that wrong? We totally did. Okay. It seems like it goes. Like the first time we mentioned sales funnel. Okay, so is it right here? Okay. Um, beautiful. Um, so is the point here, um, funnels have been used as metaphors Metaphors. <laughs> Just make it mess, met, metaphors for customer. Oh my God. Engagement. Since, let me see where it was in there. Um, 1924. I don't know. That's this one. Come on. Uh, purchase funnel. Many, is it? Conversion funnel. Okay, so we talked about all of them. Um, do we know um, who invented, okay, who coined the term funnel? Like just the word funnel? Maybe. I, uh, I feel like at this point we should be talking about who coined like sales funnel or whatever is the earliest one. Uh, who coined the term funnel in business or marketing? Yeah. Look at that. Oh man, that is sick. A little bit of history in there and the guy's mm -hmm. name is Bobo. How cool is that? Even better. Oh man, it's from even two centuries ago. We have to have this in there. 1898, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh man, that's so old. All right, so um, should we just take this whole thing? Yeah. Okay, wow, we're giving people so much information, okay. about funnels have been used as metaphors for customer engagement since 1898 that was when right that was when ad agency executive okay so let's clean up the plagiarism now yeah <laughs> uh, developed the marketing funnel um i can just say um he did this by breaking down What do you think? We don't need to say his name. No. I think we'll be able to combine these first two sentences because right now it's funnels have been used as metaphors for customer engagement since 1898. That was when ad agency executive Elias St. Elmo Lewis developed the marketing funnel concept. I feel right. like we can, because we're saying this has been used as a concept since 1988. 
that's when they first used it as a concept. <laughs> I feel right. like we can combine it and say funnels have been used as metaphors for customer engagement since ad agency executive Elias St. Elmo Lewis first used it in 1898. Great. I'm going to fix the second two lines. Um, uh, he developed Okay, I'll wait to um, he, he developed um, Or just, we don't need, he, uh, he broke down the customer mm -hmm. journey, something like that. Well, we're simplifying it so much. Customer journey into distinct stages, awareness, interest, desire, action. As a, a, the sales funnel, did, wait, what was the one he invented? I think what it was, was just. Was this called the marketing funnel or the sales funnel? I don't know. You saw that tab open. I think it's uh, your last tab. Marketing. marketing. Okay, so let's make the thing say marketing funnel is also called the blah, 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 blah. So do we want to use marketing funnel then? I think that I makes mean, more sense anyways. Because we're not yeah. selling anything yet. Yeah, we're talking about marketing, baby. Okay, okay sales. We're Let me update funnel. sales funnel. We are going to focus on the awareness. Okay, okay. This goes later. Do we need this? If you search the internet for sales funnel, you'll find hundreds of versions. No, because now we're talking about how there's a bunch of different names for the same thing. And we're already explaining awareness, interest, desire, and action. Yeah, and then we can show that. Um, um, and then so we say we are going to focus on the, this is so much better now, the awareness stage um, for this chapter, probably. Uh, let me grab an image that we're going to go with. Should it be this one? Let's, well, maybe, let's just take it and they'll redo it. Yeah. Let me grab a caption. It's so it's so much more better. Do we want to put it in between these two paragraphs or after the marketing funnel thing? Wait, did you just delete it or did I? Oh, it's I didn't here. Delete anything? Oh, it's just a giant image. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ooh. Okay, let me copy it. Put it. It goes here, right? Yeah, because that's where we're introducing it. And then I'll paste in a caption. So this is the... What do we want to call this? I'm so happy that we're not talking about the pirate metric or whatever. The pirate metric? The, like everyone just talked about the stupid pirate metric, the pirate, the, the ARG funnel and oh. my Dave McClure's if he invented it. And now we got like a guy way older than him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I wanted to get rid of that black line. Yeah. If possible. God, this is so ugly. Okay. Uh, I think it's okay. 
Is it bad that we're saying that the distinct stages are awareness, interest, desire, and action, but this funnel is awareness, opinion, consideration, preference, purchase? Yeah, that is kind of bad. <laughs> Shouldn't those match? Shit. Okay, let me get a different funnel. You catch. Okay. What? Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so we're looking for awareness, interest, desire, and action. Yeah. How about, let me copy this image. What about something like this? Are you looking for funnels now? Yeah, I just pasted one in. Oh, that has it? Yeah. I'm trying to make it bigger. But I, something like that. Ooh. I don't think we need that thing on the left, but if I cropped it out, then it would crop out part of the funnel. Um, that's just, well, if I put it in Photoshop, but uh, do we want to keep the stuff on the right? I don't know. Uh, I uh, can we find uh I don't think we do. Okay. Well if let me we see do, if I can find a simpler one then. If we do we wanna rename them, but we don't know what we do yet. Um Okay, so I'm so confused what's going on. Where do we into it? I don't like um, this particular aspiring to a particular brand or product. Yeah, I don't really know what that means either. I feel like this goes up there. Um, the funnel in the e-commerce world. Uh, Where do I say that they're also called this other thing? What other thing? The customer acquisition stages or whatever? This sounds here. I think it goes in the middle here. We didn't say marketing funnels. No, we should say. That's the thing that he called well, funnels. It. Funnels have been used as a metaphor though. The funnel yeah. is the metaphor A marketing funnel is not the metaphor. It though we have to say what he used. Yeah. Uh, he used the term. What it was it? Marketing funnel. Marketing funnel. In in eight, he broke down. Okay, so it's either this goes here, or it breaks up that concept there. Or we just put it, leave it back down here. I think we put it back down there. Yeah.
I feel like saying it doesn't really matter to me what you call it. It's that you understand it. Yeah. All right, I know that's all shittily written, but I think it's... It's got the idea in there. I think it's good. It gives the history of it. It talks about the different kinds of funnel. It gives this basic one. <sighs> Do you want me to fix this now? Yeah, I was trying to find, like, a better image, and they all kind of suck, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it just hates me uh the psychiatry the psychology of selling and advertising it it's in 1990 they have a reference there yeah for 1925 I don't want to get a copy of that book. It's so cool. Um, can you try to find a link to the image so I can fix it? Yeah. I'm just going to see if it's on eBay really fast. I know I'm wasting time. Why are I on eBay? Okay. Anyway, uh, I don't know if I'm going to find a book that's 100 years old. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the link to where I got this image from. Is it off author again? Uh, whatever. Okay. So, um, all right. What are we doing? We're looking for that stupid image. Uh, what's it called? AID. Why don't I just go AIDA funnel? That's what I was searching. Uh. Look, there's this one, that, yeah, the Ida model. Yeah, I was looking for one that had like the full word inside the funnel. Since we don't call it the Ida model. Well, we... But there's a lot of things. Well, they're going to make it for us. I think... Okay. Um, okay, so the one that you found uh, is... It's that second row, second from the left. Isn't this it right here? No, it's two above that one, is the one that I pasted in. I mean, is that better than this one I'm pointing at? Uh, no, that was the other one that I was debating pasting in. Okay, so I'll take this one, copy it. Um, bring it into Photoshop, go new. And then get rid of all this crap. Um, get rid of all this stuff, maybe? Yeah, I think if you want to get rid of that stuff, it's probably easier to just use the other image since, like, the dots overlap with the funnel. Well, Although, yeah. like you said, they're going to make you a new one anyways. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, so I'm just gonna go, uh, go. 
Um, Oh God, this is such a waste of time. You bitch. Oh shit. Okay. It does that. Okay. All right, that looks great. Okay, and then I'm gonna go like this. Because we love wasting time, right? Yep. And then I'm going to take it over here and flip it around somehow. Uh, edit, um, layer, uh, select. Um, I think it's under image. It's like image. Where is it? Image uh, rotation. And then sure. you select layer. Something like that. It's something weird. It's like in the image, even though it's for a layer, and then you just apply it to the layer. All right. Uh, uh, What's uh, under image rotation? There it is. I think, I think it's going to flip the whole. Oh, yeah, it'll flip the whole thing. Where's the. It's like, uh, yeah, this is so stupid that we're even doing this. But it's so fun. Or um, transform. How about that? Transform. Under edit. What are your options there? Ta-da! Oh my All right. god. We got there. Oh. That's why I was like, it's so more stupid. You'd think it'd be under layer, but it's not. Okay. So now I'm going to flatten this stupid thing and I'm going to take this out and clean it up again. Wow, it looks like a funnel. Okay. Amazing. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Okay, so all good. Looks great. Okay, it doesn't get simpler than this. Um, oh my god, it's the biggest funnel ever. It's clearly a funnel and it's fine. Okay, so um, now uh, the awareness stage, it needs like a paragraph. Yeah, just talking about the awareness stage and how it's relevant to us right now. Maybe it's awareness and interest. We are going to focus on how to um, as a, we are going to fo we are going to focus on how to get next. We want to get people into the awareness stage with our ads and then we want them to actively express interest on our landing page and by clicking on the ad. This is much better. There. It, see, we don't have to go back to this link startup shit. Okay, much better. So um, let me get more water and go to the bathroom. Okay. I know this is slow going, but I think it's worth it now that we got a quote from 1925 or something. That is pretty satisfying. Yeah, like history.
Oh man, I'm so happy that other crap is gone. Okay. I moved all this customer acquisition stages up. I think we should decide if we want to include any of that or just delete it. My vote is for delete it. Delete it, right? Yeah. I mean, was there, the only question is, was there <laughs> a reason why so many people made so many different funnels and is one more specific to digital or something, or is this? I think they're all just like their own spin on the same thing. You know how we're talking about like, what's another name for a feedback loop? Like, it's all just right. So, slightly different, slight variations on the same thing. Yeah, and it just confuses people. So if we just go and use the original one. Yeah, and, and I think that's the most basic one too. We're talking about making people aware, having them express interest. I think we should maybe rewrite this desire part because I don't know what it means to aspire to a brand. Yeah, well, you could do that. I just, uh, uh, so we'll just, well, let's keep this in here and see if any of it applies. Uh, well, this reference, you want to just get it out of there. You know I do. I always want to cut more stuff out. Okay. When, we didn't even make a V2 of this thing. We can save it. Make a make a V2 right now before we delete it. Okay, we are moving on. UX strategy V2. Okay. It's like we're not being like Jeff, Jeff Gall help the lean UX guy wrote an entire article on why it's not really a funnel. It's this other thing. I sent it to my brother and he was like, what? <laughs> He's like, it's a funnel. <laughs> He's like, why do people reinvent things that are perfectly fine? Yep. I'm like, cause they want to own it. And that's why there's so many different funnels. I know, but I'm like, you know, I want to go with history. Yeah. Okay. Um, I moved the V1 to the archive. Yay. And so none of this shit matters because we aren't doing this. Okay. So. Yep. Now we can happily I, I, delete it and go back to V1 if we want something from it. Fine. But I'm, it's gone. I'm just letting you know, but uh, I'm keeping suspect because I think we, we use the word elsewhere in this chapter. Yeah, I think we used it in the very beginning, at least. To convert the suspects. We might change this as to make people aware. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think we should take this awareness and interest and try to get that into these other sections. So we're just going full on into, like, disregarding all these other reinventions and just going with it. Mm-hmm. It's the simplest. It's the oldest. <laughs> why break it if it's, if it's, wait, why fix it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. I mean, is it broken? And do we have to figure out if it was broken? I was, don't think so. Like what was the, what, what is wrong with the AIDA funnel? Is it mm -hmm. too much for AIDS? It's just one of the class of models known as uh, uh, you know, customer marketing. The model is when you start, uh, you won't, okay. Um, a proven framework in 2018. Yeah, I don't think people are talking about how this is bug kiss. Bogus. This ADA is outdated. Okay, how about this? Let me just see if anyone has ever said the ADA funnel is wrong. It's outdated. The sales funnel is obsolete. Oh. Yeah, right. Okay. I mean, everybody's always going to say, this is obsolete. Use my new loop feedback circle figure eight. 
It's the latest and greatest. Look at this dude. He even said he created it in 120 years old, but it's definitely not outdated. Yeah. All right. I'm satisfied with our cursory search that it's not outdated. Okay. So I think we just want to see better definitions of it. Okay. So, yeah, definitely for that desire part. Okay. So let's just clean that. So it stands for that. Um, and then... Oh, we want, I like this word cognitive. We want that. Okay. You want it to be cognitive stages too. What, what do we have? Uh, just put it in like there. Like he, he broke the customer journey into distinct cognitive stages. Yeah. And then uh, an individual goes through during the buying process. It's not the, it's not even the, it's, if you we want to it the customer journey uh i think we like the customer journey yeah it's more uh it fits in well with what we wrote in the rest of the book too yeah it's more journey mappy my favorite thing you know yeah okay so also known as yeah right how to use it okay so Let's just say what, okay, A I D I A. Woo! I think it's giving us the um, funnel top result. Who gets it? Who wins smart insights? Wow, they even beat out. Um, Wikipedia. Wow. Awareness. Here, I'll read you what they say, and you can look at ours. Creating brand awareness or affiliation with your product or service. Let me look at them. Yeah, we have the customer is aware of the existence of a product or service. I like ours better. Okay. It's more concrete. Ours, it's, it's wiki. But, <laughs> interest. Oh, my God. They even added more. They, they, what does ADA stand for? And then they added retention. <laughs> okay. Interest. Generating interest to the benefit of your product or service and sufficient interest to encourage the buyer to start to research further. We have actively expressing an interest in a product group. They're using this like in a slightly different... Um, from a different standpoint. It, they're using it from the person making the ad versus from what the customer journey is. Yeah. The thing we need to create, we need to generate interest. Um, I do like that under desire. They have that move the customer from liking it to wanting it. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's keep that. Um, We'll just change it to say, convert the customer from liking it to wanting it. Okay? Mm -hmm. You got that? Yep. Action. Move the buyer to interact with your company and take the next step. Oh, so it has the word action in it. This is our call to action. Action, action. Yeah, and then we had taking the next step toward purchasing the chosen product. Uh, do we need to go over that? We all know that uh, the key to upsell, cross-sell, refer referrals, advocacy, and the list goes on. Oh, no, that's retention. It's weird that they go, what does it stand for? And then they add this fifth thing out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, like, they should rename it to ADAR. Yeah. Okay, what are action, what are calls to action? Where do you place them? Is it easy for customers to connect and where do they expect to find it? Think about marketing channels, how to engage, landing pages. Um, Look at that. Action, clear CTAs were positioned on the Facebook site, the website. Okay, do we have enough? So are we having people go through the full funnel then? Like, because no. they're aware of the product with the ad. Maybe. Like, is it, is expressing an interest? Is that clicking on the ad? And then the desire, 
comes on the landing page and then they take the action of pressing, clicking the call to action. It's, it sounds like that's what these guys are saying. Yeah. Um, but look, there's an, an even older book called from 1899 called Side Talks about advertising for Western druggist. It's from our favorite Elmo. I, I want a copy of this thing. It's got to be available. So it's got to be available. Um, I'll research some other time. I'm going to send a little note to it. I'll put a little note in here to find, see if I could dig it up. Um, okay, so can we move on somehow? Or do we need more stuff? Um, I think we need to maybe do a little bit of rewriting. And okay. we should probably figure out if we're saying that people are going through just the start of the funnel or the whole funnel. Um, it's just, I guess it's perception. Yeah. Um, how about we, I think I, we could do this. Go um, landing pages, A-I-D-A. -A. What do you think? Oh, man, this is going to be totally great. All right. Um, stop it. Solving. Okay, close. Yeah, solve all my landing page copy woes. The aid of formula is created to smooth out the copy. I didn't know you invented it to smooth out the copywriting process. The more you know. Ada stands for grabbing the reader attention. Grabbing the reader's attention. Make sure they continue to read on interest. Make sure they're interested in what you have to offer, desire, creating an unquenchable desire to claim your offer, action, making your reader accomplish your desired action or outcome. We should copy that in here. <laughs> I shall. Okay. Uh, do you want me to put it as a comment to ours? And we just I, would just, I would just paste it underneath it because we still need to kind of piece that together. You're in view. Yeah. Close that one. Bye. All right. Um, here? Yeah, just paste underneath there and we'll put it all together. Yeah, I'll just put these. I'll I mean, just throw all these sentences together and then we can pick and choose what we like from them. Uh, marketing now goes to every stage of the funnel. Learn about pipeline. That doesn't end with the purchase. The marketing funnel is not linear. Attract, convert, close. Oh my, so many funnels. I think it's best we go with the original. Yeah, I don't think we should use a different funnel for sure. Um, we just need to figure out how far we're claiming they're going down the funnel by doing this landing page experiment. This is a full on So they're saying that you go through the full funnel with this landing page experiment. Yeah, I'm going to put this link there and then I'm going to see one more and then I think we should move on. Yeah. And come back to it. Agreed. Wow, it's so amazing. It's opening up a whole new world for me. I love it. It's largely rooted in co consumer psychology, which is why it's, it's so impeccable when it comes to triggering conversions. All right. We definitely found the uh, OG. The winning funnel. Yeah, that was worth uh, whatever time. Okay, so let's, I'm, I'm satisfied. Let's take a, let's skip away from this now. Yeah, are we comfortable deleting this suspect stage thing? 
or do you want to leave it there as a reminder to actually integrate this awareness, interest, desire, action into our steps? What are we calling the customers who are like the awareness still might be the cusp, the suspect stage? Or what do we call the user when they're at that stage? Then we should probably include that up here. Awareness. At this stage, the customers are suspects. Interest. At this stage, the customers are blank, you know. I, are we just extracting it and making it more confusing? By saying what the customers are? By giving, yeah, by giving them these terms. Like, let me just see something. Like Possibly. This one's way too old. Um, ooh, there's even a German version, ada.de. Okay, so um, would you, do we believe that basically we're putting them through the entire ADA funnel? I would say, yeah, I think we are. Okay, so we need to clean that line up. And I'm, can you just make it safe with what I said? And I, well, I'm going to see if ADA landing pages plus uh, growth hacking. Wait, what do you want me to make it say? Good. Uh, Fix what I said that they we're going to talk about these two stages and okay. make this. We're going to uh, talk about the landing page in context of converting people through these stages or something. I don't know. Okay. Road hacking tips. When in doubt, use the ADA copywriting formula. So he was talking about writing ad copy, like for newspapers back then after the Gutenberg press. Wow. That's so old. It's like older than our grandparents. Um, growth marketing, the pirate funnel, uh, uh, oh no. That's funny. Okay, I added a note that we should edit these definitions of awareness, interest, desire, and action together, and that we should incorporate them into the landing page steps and remove the use of the word suspect. Wow. And then I updated the end to say, in this chapter, we're gonna focus on how to move people through each of these stages as part of a landing page experiment. Okay, um, that's great. So, so I would say that the funnel part is done for now. Fine. And then for growth hacking, I found a really good article. Great. Uh, if we want to talk more about it. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to have like, like, I really like this paragraph that's already in here. But I do feel like it'd be helpful to have like, like there's so many cool examples of, of interesting cases of, of doing growth hacking, hacking growth, however you want to make it a verb, that I think it would be interesting to, to throw one or two of those in there somewhere. So people get a real sense and that might come from Lex's stuff potentially, but. Yeah, and here's the ARG thing. <laughs> Awareness, acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, referral. I like this basic one. It's so much easier to understand. Well, I think it's better for us because 
where this is better for the whole product and we're just talking about acquiring customers, customer acquisition. Mm -hmm. And he wrote it, the aid of funnel to get customers to advertising. And that's what this is advertising. So I think it's fine. Look at this stupid Venn diagram. I even spelled experiment wrong. Okay, um, but let's put it as a reference here. I'm going to put a note here, expand on this more tomorrow in context. Uh, see this article. Are you good? Yep. Okay. So now we have growth design. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look growth design let's just see what comes up under that 169,000 growth dot design yeah what's the difference there's something with lex what's the difference between growth hacking and growth design as far as we're concerned in this chapter uh I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, uh, a growth designer is a, a UX person and a growth hacker is more of a, a programming, a, a developer. Mm. Um, so yeah, like, uh, so growth hacking is only a little bit UX. You'll see it at the bottom of the article where it's Growth design is a lot UX. Okay. So um, here. Beth's going to play an ad from LinkedIn. I think we're going to get started now. You guys want to come over. So, to um, the new members, thank you. There's one thing. I jumped ahead of the gun. If there's one thing I'd like you to take away tonight, it's learning. And growth is a lot about learning, so we'll see throughout the presentation. So I wanted to tell you what I've done in the past in my career leading up to Dropbox. And the way I want to do it is, let's pretend this is a retro, a retrospective. So I'll show you what I've done, what companies I've been at, and what I've done. Oh, you want to talk about is Upgrade, what have you, to take that value. And it's important because growth ties business and user needs. So you know, you might be asking, like, how can someone design for growth? So what I want to do tonight is talk about some frameworks that I use in my day-to-day -day job to design for growth. It's going to be a four-step framework. The first one, we're going to talk about our North Star. We're going to say, what is a North Star? How do you measure it? Why a North Star is important? Then we're going to be seeing uh, a mini framework that you can use to understand the space you're working in, uh, better understand the problems that you're trying to solve, and all this is in service of uh, running some strong hypotheses. Third, we're going to understand how you can explore in lean ways and cost effective ways. It's way. like almost like design thinking where they're just reinventing the term. Yeah. I guess this makes sense. I searched growth hacker versus growth designer, and the creative momentum.com says while growth design's objective is to create a user friendly website that sustainably attracts more users, growth hacking is solely attempting to beef up your audience or market share. With growth design, you can build a website that can achieve virility because users view it as easy to use. Okay, I think we need to look to see if growth design is related to product strategy at all, or UX strategy. They're saying develop expertise in design and product strategy, but they're talking product strategy with a small p. The product's already out. I, I'm just worried that it's all about tinkering with an existing product. 
Yeah, that's what I'm confused about. I am wondering if we're going to throw it out. Well, yeah, because otherwise it seems more like we're describing just like a particular job position. Oh, there's that. The early release. Oh, it still has the old shit. Okay, so. I'm sorry, what was the last one you just said? I said. I don't know how helpful it'll be if we have like growth design and it's really just like a description of what that position would be. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think at this point we need to tell people like, here's a job that exists. Like it has to be somewhat relevant to talking about this designing for conversion stuff and the landing page experiments. I, I just don't think it's related to product strategy, like developing new products. Developing a new product. I think it's about tweaking an existing product for growth. Yeah. Um, unless we can prove it. Oh, I know what we could do. Um, let's look at what's her face's decks. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the very front of the video that she lectured in the class. And let's then send her an email asking her specifically, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, not telling her that we're going to throw it out, but saying, uh, let's just see what is. Your full stack product designers mean they can run customer development and develop deep customer understanding, think through a system and visualize the experiment. Look, so says Lex. So says Lex, my sweet little student. Um, here's whoever got this really, there's a sax player. Um, Oh my God, who are these guys? At the intersection of growth, the submit to, to improve business metrics. A human center, it involves creating meaningful experiences at scale. So basically it seems like the only difference between growth design and growth hacking is like growth hacking is trying to just like do whatever it takes, it's more gorilla, you know, like it's doing whatever it takes to get some increase in stuff at like the lowest cost possible. Whereas growth design is trying to do it all like sustainably, like something that can be scaled up. But then I don't really understand the difference between like growth design and UX design. Like, isn't that an objective of UX designers too? Not always. Um, traditionally, they're not thinking about growth uh, design. Uh, like some German guy, he actually said it to me two days ago or after the workshop, like growth, he's like, Germany's like 10 years behind and they're thinking on UX and that, you know, here they're just designing around usability and stuff like that. They're not mm -hmm. like paying attention to uh, strategy. Okay, so, then what's the difference between a growth designer and a UX strategist? A lot. I'd like to think coronavirus UX. Um, I think that seven alternatives to growth design case studies. User retention. That's the thing is, I think it's about retention more than acquisition. Yeah, that's and uh, it is about product strategy, but it's 
sort of based on that you already have a product. Yeah. Well, because it's hard to like change some part of an existing design and like you're like that's much more like detail oriented where you're just like oh if we send people this kind of push notification versus no notification like will that encourage them to open the app more as opposed to like if i make this value prop or that value prop will people click on this ad or try to download the app like that feels much bigger yeah we're talking about marketing at this point and yeah, this growth design stuff seems much more detail oriented and related to it, an existing product, like you said. Um, so, and I feel uh, another thing I wanted to talk about somewhere in the book was the hook model. And here we're seeing the internal and external triggers mm -hmm. which from Muriel's hooked. Right. So it's making me think that it's just like a paragraph that includes a mention of other trending things around conversion once you have a product or while you're building the product include and then is hooked and growth design goodbye i like it i think that's a nice way to do it i don't know where this is going to go other forms of conversion design um I'm just gonna, a lot of uh, frameworks out there that get into product strategy. Um, besides growth hacking. I'm just writing this really fast. One is um, growth design. Frameworks or terms, growth design, okay. Can you see um, which, uh, I'm just gonna make this up, but which we could have Lex fix it, which came after hacking growth Wait, which came after the, I feel like, which, which, I don't, I, I'll dare say this, which came as an outcry, if that's a word, from UX designers who were into, who specialized into in conversion, but we're certainly not hackers. Um, growth design is blah, blah, blah. Um, it's different from, I don't even know if we need another sentence. We just have a quote, Lex Roman, who specializes in it, describes it as law, blah, blah, and let him just send it to her. Instead of saying specializes twice, can we say who works as a growth designer or something? And then, um, or he, you know, or who, yeah, he, he's like a, a, a top growth designer in the field. Um, and then another framework is called the hooked model. This one came out of Stanford's uh, 
blah, 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 and was popularized in Near El's book. That I encourage you called Hook. I don't know. I encourage you to read the Hook framework is blah blah blah. Do those tomorrow. Um, um, it's not other forms of conversion. It's like other trends. It's not trending either. It's like outgrowths of conversion design, or to be determined. Yeah. Other. I'm looking for something that doesn't have the word other in it. <laughs> so it's not just like, and other. It's like, okay, let me just see if these two are in a, um, I think we're getting closer, a hell of a lot closer. Yeah, I mean, basically, if we just fill in all these blah, blah, blahs and expand more here, then we'd be done with the first pass of the intro. I know, I'm happy about that. Um, and we'll just send it to What's Your Face, to Lex. Oh, we we're going to watch the video. We'll, we'll know. Uh, so it's just something, uh, need to, let's just put need title. Yeah. Need title in bullshit below to conversion. So I would say that the title of this chapter is designing for conversion. Yes, definitely. We aren't changing the title. It all goes back to conversion, Jessica. Always does. Everything, everything goes back to conversion. You know, you want to convert your mom, your boyfriends, your, your children. Convert them all. Yes. Convert them into things that you want them to be. Yep. All right. So should we look at Lex for a minute and then we'll hang up because we're just so successful? Sure. I'm pretty happy with today. <laughs> yeah. I hope everybody watching this is happy with today. Oh, yes. <laughs> You forgot about them? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Um, is it still recording? It is. Oh, Jesus. Um, okay, so let's take a look at Lex's. We're going to look at the lecture, right? Yeah. And then we're putting growth design to bed. Yeah, it'll, it'll just have a short paragraph. That'll be on par with the hooked model. Okay. Got it. I think that's fair. Yeah. Okay. And then mobility is just this weird thing coming out of nowhere. <sighs> okay. So let's see. Uh, do you think I need to find the one from the class or from her online? Just. Um. I know she has her slides online, but I don't know if she has like videos of her giving presentations online. Well, I'm sure she does. Let's see. But like this particular, I don't know. It might be more helpful to find the class one because she's probably tying it more directly to UX strategy. Probably, you're right. Um, learn about my practice. Look, it's product analytics, $30. 
Okay. So what's in her growth design FAQ? I'm curious. What yeah. is growth design? There's her definition of growth, growth design. Oh, let's just take it. I'm just going to copy this whole thing in. It's way too long, but we can cut it down tomorrow. It's the joint practice of growth and design. Designers who not only solve for customer pain, but do so in a way that grows business. Okay. Ugh. So complicated. All right. Um, let me see if I have the video. And, uh, um, God, where would it be? It's okay. If I go to my docs, I know I loaded everything up into my Google drive. And it started. Okay. Look at that. You know, we are also going to watch how oh, she looked so cool that day. We are also going to watch the landing page. We have so we are going to go through all the landing page crap. We have, we're fine. We're going to have content. Yeah, we definitely have plenty. And I think if we tie everything back to Ada and get rid of the suspect crap. Go ahead. making money they were at this point they're like series d of funding but they didn't know which let's see um oh well, she's like talking about her different jobs but did she have like a like an intro intro where she was talking about growth design yet or did she talk about her job and then talk about growth design she's just talking about me i'm even more worried that this froze um oh what what is this that was weird Oh my God. Um, I don't know if it's gonna play this, Jessica. Maybe it's. What? I don't know. Is it just the internet? Like, is it unhappy because you're on Zoom and recording? Probably. Um, I need to get a stronger computer, but I don't have the money. I, there's lots of things. I have many needs, but they're all too expensive. I um, feel that. <laughs> actually, uh, Lex Roman growth design. Oh my god. Oh god. Hello everybody. Welcome to another, I think this is going to be an incredible interview. Uh, I've got Lex Roman here on the call with me and she's a super, super interesting, interesting design. You are. Uh, so I went to UCLA Extension, which is the sort of the night program of UCLA. And I took a UX design class. This was like my first foray into UX wow. from a professor named Jamie Levy, who Thank had, you. before that you had kind of graphic design experience or no design experience? Uh, my, so my design experience before that was primarily so in set design for television. That was my Friday. career. Go. Jamie Levy, who had Jamie Levy. Books, and she recommended Running Lean, which, which I love. Like I still flex. Yeah. Like, That's so sweet. Was, she gives me so much credit. Um, 
it, it was a company that was founded by did you work with her too or did she just take your class i went to another consultancy in the worked bay with her. named carbon five which had Jen. okay so you were not like specifically designer me so what does that mean yeah for, for people who have no clue so I think of growth as a practice that can sit alongside any core skill set. So you can have growth marketers, growth engineers, growth PMs, growth designers. So it's the growth skill set with the design skill set. What does that mean? Okay, what does that mean for people who have no clue, who didn't read like hacking? Code, yeah. For example, or... <laughs> um, so it's the intent to grow the business and to do so um, exponentially. So. That's the core, I mean, that's the core driver of, of anyone who has like a... So that's all about grow the business as opposed to start a business. Yeah. Like, I think it's more related to scale ups than new, like developing a business idea. Agreed. Weird, and we were like discussing this and I felt like... A lot of designers are... That's true. And we need to be cautious of being like overly pretty and, and like I said, overly designing or overbuilding our things. I'm just to say... Don't overbuild your things. There's a lot of nuance to it. And I just wanted to share opportunities and challenges and tools with other designers, uh, specifically about the design part of growth. There are a lot of resources on growth marketing, there's, there's less resources on growth product and there's even less on growth design. So I wanted, I wanted the community of practice, which is why I started those things. Uh, so growth marketing is a thing that we might need to look into. Potentially. <laughs> Thanks Lex for making my life harder. Okay. Just more things. Yeah. Growth marketing has 3.2 million results. Are you serious? Yep. The process of designing and conducting experiments to optimize and improve the results of a target area. Of a target area? If you have a certain metric you want to increase, growth marketing is a method you can utilize to achieve that. Growth marketing isn't about fixating on one part of your funnel. It's about looking at your entire customer life cycle. Okay. Well, it sounds still like you have a product. It's not like. Yeah, it focuses on customer relationship building and fostering loyalty. It's a long-term strategy. All right. Do we need to even mention it? Potentially. I don't know. It's like, I feel like a lot of this stuff in this section is really more like once you have a product, you know. Because yeah, the hooked model is talking about, like, how do you keep people coming back to it? Growth right. design is once you already have it and you're trying to scale it up. And growth marketing is kind of a, a mix of the two. Like, it's how to bring, keep bringing people back. Okay. All right. So why don't we... Um, didn't you download her something or other? Her book or... Download her book? What book? No, her deck, or did I? Oh, her deck is online. It's lexroman.com forward slash growth dash design dash resources. I can also forward you the email where you sent me the link. Or just, uh, I'll just copy it in there. Put it in chat or put it in the doc and then let's take a quick look at it. Yeah, I'll put it in the doc. So it looks like, you know, we answered the question. Growth design is not related to business idea testing. All right. Why do you put it in the chat? I put it in the doc, just like in that section with talking about legs. Like go down? Yeah. Yep, right there. Okay. 
I can't believe how much it changed. Fine, the final matrix was lame, whatever. Oopsie, uh, or download the slides. Um, if you just click on the picture of the slide, it'll take you to the her Google Drive file. Nice looking slides. Um, we should remember to talk about hacking growth, I guess. When I talk about Sean Ellis. Is hacking growth different than growth hacking? It's the book he wrote, and for some reason he called it hacking growth instead of growth hacking. Oh, okay. I'll put a note. Here and look at this. Um, uh, focused on highest impact, identify missed opportunities, able to track goals, ships to learn. We're we're not in this. Yeah, I think tomorrow we we should look at this section again and decide if what if any of this stuff actually fits in this chapter. Look, there I am again. Can any of this stuff fit into the next chapter? What? No way. It's on digital transformation. No, it's just going to be. OK. Oh, that's funny. Um, all right. So any of what stuff fits in this chapter? This? Any of this stuff on like once you already have a product idea? I guess not. That's outside of the scope of digital transformation. Oh, it, it, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think so. Um, well, let's just, tomorrow we'll keep, we'll spend another full day, like, doing the intro. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and, and, like, we don't even need the, the quote from her. We have it in there. And then... Yeah. And then, like, go back and forth looking at the landing page, because I think the problem is that um, is that it's like I'm losing uh, the, the 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 keep my eye on the ball. It should be on testing business idea and and conversion testing is just, just we just want to convert them on the landing page at this point to yeah. test interest and focus on the AIDA and not go down that rabbit hole into the hook model and growth design. Yeah. I think if anything, we could have like at the end of growth hacking, we could just have a sentence or two that says like, once you have a product, like you can, you know, use things like, you can hire growth designers to like spend a lot more time figuring out how to improve an existing product. But for now, our focus is on customer acquisition and gauging interest. Yeah, and it could say, uh, I hope we remember this, that like, uh, that, um, it, yeah, if you wanna learn more about, you know, that the hacking, that the, you know, growth hacking started basically uh, um, a lot of trends or a movement around growth and you should read the book growth design uh, growth hacking Sean's book and you can learn about growth design and growth marketing and growth 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 and then it's like a paragraph mm -hmm. and then that's that's it and then we get into Mobility, we don't talk about growth design tools. And we just, and we write the mobility thing. How long is this thing? It's like 23 pages, people are gonna be exhausted. Yeah. This concludes, I'm caring for connecting the extra.
Mm. All right, we good? Yeah, I think tomorrow we'll just try to finish our first pass of the intro and then maybe get started on the mobility sidebar if we have time. That's good. And then we continue in Los Angeles. Hooray. At, in the afternoon time. Yay, you get to sleep in. Hooray. <laughs> no more 7, 7 a.m. wake-ups. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks so much, Jamie. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.